Hello and uh, welcome back to another episode of the Fluke Friday. It is the episode where I slowly grow through the type numbers and slowly will go up. It is episode 19 and we also reached the 1900 series and that means the frequency counters. And I like to introduce you to a few of the type numbers from the time that Fluke still made their own frequency counters and it actually sat in the bottom here made in the USA. Not only did make uh, Fluke frequency counters in the 1900 series, I will slowly go uh, through them with pictures also because I don't have them all here, but they also made a few in the 7200 series and they were also made in USA. I also have pictures of those, but of course later uh, they joined with Philips and then they made the PM6600 series, but that will come really when I come into the in the 6000s. So the 1900s, and here we have the 1900s. This is the normal 1900, this is the 1910, and the 11, and the 12, and here it is the 1920. And well, if we look at the design, I would probably think that this one came first, then this one, and then this one. And you can see that on the buttons, these have this classic push version. This is like the 8000, if we look at the multimeters. And then this one would be like the 8010, if I look at the buttons. So that would be more or less the order when they came out. But think of middle 70s for all of them between 70 and 80. Let's start with the uh, normal 1900 because we do an order of type number. You can see here it's a counter that goes only up to 80 megahertz and that was probably a lot in that time. I don't see any 50 ohm support so it's only the high impedance 1 mega and it has 6 digits. I'm not sure if they all work but I think this one does. It looks quite clean so I probably did that in one of my videos. And, well, let's see, some of them also have external reference input, and I'm not sure if this one has. Let's have a quick look around. Yeah, this one is indeed clean. I think I did this. It is quite heavy, and I have a warning here also. Uh, this one has, I think it's optional one, it's the battery pack. And I need to take those batteries out, I forgot in the other time. In the back is only the main connection. So there is no external reference. And if we look at the form factor, I think it is best compared with the famous 8000 that will come later in the series. Same size, same form factor. But when we look at the color scheme, maybe it comes closer to the 8600 that I have here this color scheme and the fonts maybe compare better and it's all 70s 80s I'm not sure if it still works although I think this one does the 1900 let's just switch it on it does not have external reference and I didn't heat it I'm just now switching it on so let's see how close it is to the 10 megahertz if it even works uh, it goes up to 80 megahertz, so it should be able to do it. Well, it is still <laughs> very good. Do I have, I have already all the six digits. I am already using all the digits. So if I go a scale down, it will go in over range. But if you imagine the first one here, then it is still, look at this, it is still reasonable spot on. And it is cold, so maybe even it will be better later. I'm not sure if it still makes sense if I go even lower. Yeah, so that tree that we saw is actually in two tree. And now it seems spot on. Later we have a look inside. Let's go to the next one. Well, the 1900 and the 1910 only have one port. The 1910 goes not to 80, but to 125. But the 1911 I have here, have two ports, just like the 1912. And the second port here goes up to 250 megahertz. 
and the 1912 goes up to 520 MHz. I don't have that here, but I do have the 1911. Not sure if it works. Let's have a closer look. So the 1911. If we go around, same form factor again. And only here in the back we have an external reference input. I think it is 10 MHz. And there is a little adjust also for the internal oscillator. We can have a look inside with this one later. We can compare them all three. And here we have the port to 125, just like the 1910. Only here we have a second prescaled port that goes up to 250. Let's connect the power and see what it does. And let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It seems to have one digit extra. Well, it is breaking the barrier of 100 because instead of 80 megahertz, it, the first one goes to 125. So the 1910 probably also has that because you need then that extra digit. It's measuring a frequency. What if I do a check and I do auto? I expected now to see 10 megahertz, but I don't see. So maybe the oscillator doesn't run. It does sort of count here, but I don't know what because then nothing is connected to it. Let's do frequency. I can do this in channel A. I can move a little bit the sensitivity, I think. Yeah, trigger level. It doesn't really do anything. And this one is not working. Or channel B. But channel B starts at 50 megahertz. I see something blinking. So it seems to do something there. I'm not sure what. What if I change the external reference? Switch it over. Yeah, now it doesn't count anymore. Let's connect, switch it off. This one does not have the battery option. I'm putting external reference, switching it over to external reference. And of course, I need to connect it also to the distribution amplifier. And if I switch it on, okay, yeah, now I have digits. So it does see the 10 megahertz signal in the back. So the oscillator seems to run and now also on external, but somehow it does not want to count. It is not triggered, but I can see it sampling because we do see the blinking. So maybe they just blew up the input. Well, it's clear that the form factor is the same as the other 8000, but I mentioned the 8010 for the buttons, and I have one here. If I zoom in and we have a look at the buttons, you can see it is very similar, and that's why I think this one is a little bit lighter. The color is not adjusted yet to this color, but still, they are already using the modern buttons. So we can open them later and just compare a little bit. And uh, we move on to the 1920. And even though that the number is higher, I expect it to be a lot older. Because if you look at these push buttons, so even it's older, it's still impressive to 520 megahertz. Or maybe it's not all there, it's just the professional range. Um, form factor is different. Look at these old style push buttons. It is pretty cool. And they have these red markings on the top to see that you have pushed it. So you can see what setting it is on. Yeah, cool. Different, different from the other ones. The form factor, it is a lot bigger. Well, a lot it is bigger. If we have it here. And yeah, we have this one. This is the 8900 form factor. And 
it is not only less deep, it is also less tiny. And let's have a look in the deck. This one is heavy, I also think it has a uh, battery option. I also need to take out the batteries. External reference. It was on external, I'm switching it now to internal. And uh, let's power it up. Oh wait, I wanted to show you the series from the DMMs. And I have one here also. And this is the 8800. I will come into that series later. But you can see it is sort of the same design and we see here already a lot of connections. So this is their more professional series, I would think. So let's try power it up. I think it must be working as it is also very clean. So I probably also did a video on this one already before. But let's just try. It does power on. I see that one digit is missing. Well, we see here that the gate is blinking. That is always nice information. Instead of seeing the whole display sampling, you can see that. Faster, faster. One digit, ah, now the digit came back. It looked like it was broken. And then later it comes, okay. Let's put a signal in it. Yes, 10 megahertz, it says. We have more digits in this one. And this is on its own oscillator. Can I go one more? Now you can see that the gate time becomes a lot longer because we need to wait. Oh yeah, kijk, how many digits we have here? Eight. Eight digits. And this is on his own clock. And it is still cold. Let's go to one edge. And, well, what does it do on the external reference? Because that is, of course, built for things like this. So we connect it in the back. I need to switch it over with the switch. And then it should be, of course, spot on. Ah, the switch was not switched over well. I expect this. So that works pretty cool. Can I do the extra digits? Do we have a mind? Yes, look at that. We have even nine digits. Yeah, this must be the professional range. Before we open them up, uh, I want to introduce you a little bit to the other uh, type numbers that Fluke still made their own counters. The, the, this is the 1920, but there is also a 1925. And then there is also, uh, I think it's an older one if you look at the design. It is the 1950A. And then there is also uh, the 1952A and the 1953A. Those are 19 inch uh, designs and, um, and it goes up to 125 MHz, but with a prescaler on channel C, uh, it goes even up to 1200 MHz, so pretty serious. And then they also have the 7200 series and they actually look a little bit like the HP series uh, 53. It is this almost modeler. So now it's time to open the 1900s.
Okay, this surprised me a little bit because I knew this one would be a little bit older because of the design of the buttons and we can see that now also in the PCB. But I thought that the 1900 would be older than the 1910 or the 1911. And if you look at the PCBs, this one clearly looks newer. But it could just be a newer revision. If we look at the 1920 here, we see the whole layout with the, with the Preskyler input here. And if we look in the back, we see that it has a proper oscillator. Here it is. So it is not just running on a simple crystal, it actually has a proper oven. And we have here the 1900. We can see that the PCB looks a lot newer. It's all greenish instead of this old fashioned color. And uh, well, just like you see in the newer counters, also the Preskyler is just uh, on the side. I still have the batteries in. They should go out because it, they will become terrible. But uh, disappointment here. But maybe because it only goes up to 80. It's just, just a standard crystal there. And uh, 1911. And although that the design of the buttons is newer, if we look at the components, it looks older because we have here the ICs, and usually these ones would now look like those. So this is older. But it does have also the CTS 10 MHz TCXO. Well, this is the 1900 and it, it was working good and also the frequency was more or less spot on what you can expect from a, with a normal crystal and without external reference. And uh, it looks quite new, but it still has the, the NICATS as an option in. It doesn't seem that they have leaked, but I just don't feel comfortable that they are still in here. So I would just take them out and uh, because you, you never know, and when it starts leaking, you feel sorry that you didn't take them out. So, that is what I will do. I'm not sure if they have been replaced or not, but there is probably a date. Date code is 89, so it's already, so that is 90, so it is like 30 years. 30 years, they need to go out, <laughs> for sure. Well, I have some foam here that I'm going to use as dummies for the batteries. So I can just screw back together the whole holder. So maybe if later in the future I or someone else wants to replace the batteries, that is still possible because all the parts are still there. Okay, that done. Uh, I want to try now in the, this is the 1911. I want to try to see if the oscillator is running or not. And sometimes you can see that by just connecting it to the external reference and then see if the 10 megahertz comes out. And then at least we can see if, uh, if there is signal. So that was the Fluke 1900 series and the 7000. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.